Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How are you today? I'm doing well, man. So I had a few technical difficulties last week. I know you were able to chat with our man, Basil Chapman. So we haven't chatted, you and I, Teddy, in two weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. Has the market been moving in the last couple of weeks? Where are we at, man? Uh, oh, I I'd kid. So. But, yeah. um, where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? I know we always talk crude. It's back near 100 bucks almost. That market pretty wild lately. But uh, where do you want to kick things off this morning? Well, it's Fed Day, so let's start with the 30-year, and then we'll we'll move into crude because it all comes into play together. So perfect. Um, we, we had that nice little rally in the bond market when the Ukraine-Russian uh, conflict started a few weeks back, and when we were talking, you and I, two weeks ago, I said be be very leery of this rally. It's a corrective move for one, and we were we had that was when we had two weeks away before the Fed meeting. So yeah. now we all are anticipating a quarter point rate hike. Um, they're not going to do more than that because it's not Volcker and they're not that kind of a Fed. So um, <clears throat> the speak, I think, will be something to listen to over the next couple of weeks. But we all know what's going to come out of that. You know, they're going to say the same blah, blah, they always do. And raising rates is still going to be on the table for the next six to eight months for sure. So um, I'd be very uh, leery of buying the bond market right now or the 10-year note market. I would be looking to sell rallies. And uh, now today, watch out. If you're not in the market already, don't even bother until tomorrow. Seriously. you got to remember you have rollover going on, which you have, means you have futures and options expiration going on in all of the financials because they expire in March, June, September, and December. And then you have the oil expirations as well. Okay, So with that, just the mechanics of that going on, with the Fed meeting going on, you're going to have a lot of algo activity. Okay, So I would say for sure, if you're not involved right now, wait a couple of days and then reevaluate things. Okay. Now, as far as oil, you know, we've had a nice little reprieve, but remember that the last time you and I talked, we were coming off a week that just from Sunday to Monday, it jumped $15 alone, you know, and now it yeah. shot all the way up to the 120, 126 area. So um, that's, you know, markets come out like they go in. I, you hear me say that all the time. So this is just a corrective snap back, you know, and uh, I would be, very leery trying to be a dollar or excuse me an oil bear right now you know now we are at that friction point remember how i told you this is before the ukrainian crisis that w once oil gets to that hundred to 110 dollar a barrel area and that was if we just grab it you know went along the normal slope um that would start to restrict people's buying decisions you know which now we know for sure we're yet we are in that you know, we have this Ukrainian uh, Russian crisis, which is going on. So that's going to, I think, no matter what, keep oil supported, you know, plus you have the rotation of the refineries in the U.S. So that another thing going switching from the winter to the spring crude or uh, refining process, what have you, is going to also cause a spike, you know, in uh, gas prices or at least keep them up, you know. So oil, if anyone wants to be a bear and think that we're going back to 70 or $60 anytime soon, I highly doubt that, you know. So um, plus you got to remember that we went from 60 to 126 in a very short amount of time. So that correction that we had is just that. Okay, so let's let's put this into perspective with the currencies. So as far as <clears throat> we looked at with the Japanese yen, hey, we finally got the breakout. <laughs> Ooh, I saw that getting ready for you, man. Quite the breakout and, and gold <laughs> reacting accordingly. Go for it, man. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, I've been long the U.S. dollar yen for months, you know, and uh, boy, it was really nice to wake up on Sunday and Monday and see the, how this uh, got a nice little rally going, you know. So I'm very happy. You know, my quarter has been completed. <laughs> you nice. Know. No, that's quite a move, man, from 115 so, to 118 in like a heartbeat, basically. Yeah. Right. Now, remember, I had 117 half as a, as a short term target with 122 being a longer term target. Um, do I think we're going to rock it up to 122 anytime soon? Um, I think it'll be sooner than later, but not that quick. I think you're probably going to run into a little bit of resistance over the next couple of days. We got and, and until the Fed meeting is over. Nothing is going to happen with the yen. OK. Um, after the Fed meeting, going into tomorrow and Friday's trade, we'll see. I wouldn't doubt that you see a little bit of a pullback, but I'm a buy break scenario guy right now with that market because as long as crude is strong, okay, that's keeping that supported. As long as the interest rates are, are, are hitting their lows, the 30-year and the 10-year, plus we, if we do get the rate hike, which is expected, that should keep the pressure on the Japanese yen, meaning that the U.S. dollar yen trade is going to be a very sustainable bull for a while, okay? 
Now, as far as the European currencies, obviously this whole conflict is, has an issue with that. Um, we have a short-term bounce in the euro um, and also in the pound. Uh, the euro, I would be very leery of uh, that market right there. I would look to sell rallies in that and do not try and pick a bottom with that at all because we could be trading down at 107 or 106 in the euro in a heartbeat, literally. You know. Um, now, the pound <clears throat> is a totally different story. Obviously, they're supported by oil. The interest rate equation does weigh on them, but the Bank of England is also kind of on par with our Fed, at least somewhat. So I would expect that you're going to see them raising rates as well, um, which also will support the pound. Okay, I have a short-term buy signal in the pound that, was, um, that happened as of yesterday's close, but <clears throat> it is a short-term buy signal in a corrective uh uh, correction is what we have right now. Okay, so any upside cool. move is supposed to be viewed as a correction. But I can see it getting up to about 131.95 from the British pound US dollar, which will be critical. If this market is going to be neutral or even remotely a short term bull, it has to cross that threshold. If it runs into resistance there, then it can possibly be back on its lows very quickly. And that pound US dollar, are you pulling that area, Teddy, from kind of the lows it had back in December? Um, like one, the, just that, that area, where do you get that 131 out of curiosity, 131.95 or close to 132? Where do you pull that from? That's off the recent swing high. So if cool. you look at yesterday, if you look at today, today it said, or yesterday it said a, a little bit lower low. Um, you had a, bear, a bullish engulfing line, short term buy signal. Now, if you look at that yes. last low, the last high was a couple sessions before that. That's where I'm getting the 131.95 at. I got it. So Perfect. That, okay. March 10th, I like it, perfect. And now if we cross the 131.95, then I think 133.25 to about 133.70 would be your your blow off high, which that would be good nice. if there's gonna be a, a, an extended correction. Now remember, the dollar's been on a tear. It's very likely that after the Fed meeting, we could see a pullback in the dollar. It doesn't sure. mean the bear, it's gonna be bearish, but it's good to take some profits. So that's very likely to happen. It seems like all over this market, Teddy, it'd be good to take some profits or wherever you are, right? Some of these, I mean, right. it's just you started off with the 30-year, man. I've been talking about the 10-year on my show, just saying, folks, and, and, you know, I consider myself somewhat young in the market, and that's changing, unfortunately, over time. But for what I've seen, Teddy, that move in six days, you know, mm -hmm. uh, not surprising when you think we have a Fed lifting off today for the foreseeable future, but pretty right. surprising you can go from 1.6% and change to 2.2% almost uh, over seven trading days, basically. Where right. do you see, let me put you, you know, this is the million dollar question, if okay. not even more. Uh, we got about 30 seconds here. Where do you see this 10 year maybe going over the course of the year? Obviously a lot can change, but considering mm -hmm. the Fed and, and their hiking path. Um, I would say that as, as far as a bearish continuation, um, I think that you could see the distance that we've fallen so far this year, I think is about a third of the distance we're going to fall before the end of the year. Okay. So we're only a third of the way there. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm this, I, you know, I, big moves are possible. We know with yeah. this market, Teddy, great to talk to you, man. We appreciate the you education, too. the conversation. We'll talk to you next week, man. Sounds great, Tommy. Have a good okay. day. Okay. You too, Teddy. 